behind the head of a human being on a staircase is not a new normal. Uh, in our days, when we are growing up, we will hardly see this kind of things, or let alone see a dead body. But today, uh, people are walking past dead bodies to their job sites. And then uh, the, the, the killing of this journalist is not the first of its kind. It has happened, and this has to do with uh, the censorship of the press. Uh, also, uh, you will know that uh, one of the factors that contributed to this crisis that we have been in are things of this kind of nature. And this also accounts for the mass influx of uh, uh, Cameroonians into foreign lands, some in Mexico, some along uh, uh, North Africa in the desert, which has led to the granting of the temporary protective status by the United States. And here we are receiving them day in, day out, some jumping through the fences of Mexico. And this is about uh, persecution. Persecution, barbaric persecution from things of this nature. And the question is, uh, all this down, boils down to peace and reconciliation. The nation has to reconcile. The nation has to uh, come to a peace table whereby things of this nature have to be resolved. So uh, I'm glad you linked this up with the topic where we are talking about the peace, Canada peace uh, process that uh, is, is having some loopholes or is having some barricades uh, that we should talk to. We should talk uh, uh, like, this, like the same package. We should talk about it like the same package. I think um, uh, I will condemn outrightly the claim of this journalist and uh, we really need uh, press reforms. We really need to enact strong laws about freedom of speech, freedom of association, and we need to bring all these corporates uh, to book. And then they have to stand a trial and they need to be punished so as to serve an example that this kind of barbaric killing should never repeat itself again. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Nicola Santos, note that uh, Martinez Zogo, before his death, was the director of a private radio station, Amplitude FM. Uh, he was kidnapped on the January 17 by unknown assailants after trying to enter a police station to escape his attackers. Zogo had recently, uh, according to information, been taken on air about. Uh, uh, talking on air about a case of alleged embezzlement involving media outlets with government uh, connections. Uh, let's hear from you, uh, Mr. Foncha. Uh, this, what does this mean to you? And uh, how do you think Cameroonians should react? Or what do you think uh, the government should do uh, regarding the protection of uh, journalists, especially in Cameroon, regarding the death of Martinez Zogo? Well, um, uh, uh, thank you for uh, bringing up this very um, uh, important uh, situation that is happening right now in Cameroon. Uh, first of all, I want to extend my condolences to the family of uh, Martinez Zogo. But we must uh, uh, realize that this is not the first time it's happened. Remember Wazizi from our English-speaking extract in the country that was uh, brutally killed as well, and other journalists. And we must realize that Cameroon has got uh, press censorship for the longest time ever since we had our, our uh, 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 independence from uh, France or um, uh, when English Cameroon joined um, uh, the French Cameroon, you know, to create a United Republic of Cameroon or a Cameroon Federation. We have always had this press censorship. And this is just... This case of Martin Zogo that was brutally kidnapped and killed is just another example that Cameron is moving with full speed ahead into an existential, an existential political crisis beyond 2025. Why I say beyond 2025 is because those individuals or persons who are involved in this type of assassination and killings in Cameroon, those are people triangulating or juggling themselves with their proxies who are committing these huge atrocities across the nation. They are juggling and positioning themselves to wrench the power of government in that council. We know the assassination of Martin Zogo were not just ordinary bandits like ordinary bandits trying to rob him. This is connected to his outspokenness about the level of corruption that exists within the government of Cameroon, that is within certain kleptocrats 
who are part of that government. We know some of them. We can't be naming them here, but we all know, Cameroonians know exactly that they have extremely corrupt individuals in the government, and we are coming into a head right now, into a space right now where if the government of Cameroon, the judiciary, and the security forces don't clean up their mass levels of corruption and nepotism, the country is going to descend into a political crisis that we have never seen before. And we must understand, we have to put in context also that Cameroon is the most consequential country in Central Africa and the Gulf of Guinea region. So Cameroon descending into a political crisis and a conflict that has been raging for six years today in the northwest and southwest regions of the country is very detrimental to the entire project of CAFTA, Continental African Trade Agreement. It's very detriment detrimental to also the integration of the region economically and politically. So Cameroon has to lead by example as the leader of that sub-region. But right now, looking at the way things are going, taking people, kidnapping people in the, in the Northwest region, in the Southwest region, and killing them, kidnapping journalists like Martin Zogo, and killing him brutally. And I, I mean, just, it's, it's fun. I can't even speak the way that guy was killed. But what I want to tell Cameroonians today is, we Cameroonians in general, if we cannot objectively criticize the government, then we are also part of the tyranny that we live under. So Martin Zogo was a clear example of a patriot who criticizes the excesses of the government, the corruption, uh -huh. and this patriot was killed for bringing out to light what is eventually going to be the future, a brighter future for Cameroonians to be able to muster the courage to speak truth to power like he did, and he died for that. All Martin right, thank Sobo you. Uh, thank you. Died Fonch. for the freedom of Cameroon. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Foncha. Thanks for that. Uh, let's hear from you, uh, Mr. Gene Elvis uh, Bane. Uh, you are a journalist and uh, a police analyst based in Yaoundé. The death of Martinez Zogo is coming. Uh, just after Cameroonians, uh, especially those in English-speaking regions, are yet to uh, forget uh, the uh, death of uh, Samuel Wazizi in 2019. Now, we have another case again at hand. Martinez Zogo was kidnapped and brutally murdered. As a journalist, how does this make you feel, noting that uh, the press, of course, it's under attack again? Yeah, you have to put on your microphone, Mr. Gene Elvis. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you know, I was saying that it is common and easy today to say that um, uh, Martinez was um, uh, kidnapped and assassinated by people who are still to be identified officially. So in that case, we are hoping that the justice system in this country is going to do something in that line as far as um, uh, uh, the, ex uh, the, the freedom of expression is concerned in the domain of journalism. But we also know that in the case of Wazizi that you just cited, those who killed him were well known and an official statement from the state clearly um, established that um, he was murdered by um, uh, those that were announced at the time. But today the question is what was done? And like we say, before Wazizi, we had, had other cases. Now it is Martinez. And uh, personally, I will tell you that I am one of those persons that have often been very, very skeptical when it comes to the justice system in this country, especially when it comes to shedding much light on cases like this one. Because like many have said, and like Cameroonians today already know, these are cases that are directly linked to individuals by virtue of their profession and what they do with some individuals, be it within the system in place or some private individuals who don't feel comfortable with what these journalists do, therefore decide to take the loss into their own hands and uh, they do what we have seen them do before and now again. But um, uh, the only thing I can rather regret, like I've said already, is the fact that we have a justice system that seems to have pushed us to losing confidence in them. And uh, in this case, we may only hope 
that perhaps for once they will be able to do their job the right way and be able to situate Cameroonians exactly, not only as to who are the people who did what happened to Martinez, but that they will actually come out rightly and uh, render justice the way it is supposed to be done. Let those who committed this crime be called to book and the answer for their crimes. And of course, if possible, they go back into digging into the cases of people like um, Wazizi, um, the Bibi Gotas, and the others of, of the past to see that justice is done. Talking about press as a whole in Cameroon, I will tell you that um, uh, the only thing I can say is that Cameroonian journalists should not um, uh, give up. They should not get intimidated because when you see uh, uh, the, the, the publicity that was done around the death of um, Martinez, then you understand that it was a direct or indirect way of communicating to some media men who still respect the ethics of the profession and do their job without bias, that if you go digging into certain areas in this country, your life is at stake. So I just want to think that we can rather but encourage journalists to keep doing their job. They should be conscious that those are some of the dangers that go with the profession. And come to think of it, talking about Martinez, you realize that there are some whistleblowers, even before his kidnapping, who already announced that Martinez was a target. But now, if the justice, if the security agent, uh, uh, agents in this country were serious, at least they should have taken that into consideration and maybe some sort of uh, want to guarantee him at least some minimal um, security, at least within this period of time. But that was never the case. So we want to hope too that there are some errors that when we have committed or once we have committed as a nation, as a people, as mortals, maybe from now henceforth, the, 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 the security system should be able to take that into consideration. When next may be such whistleblowers come out to tell that these and these persons' lives are at stake, they should at least uh, uh, issue them some minimal respect, uh, sorry, some minimal protection as far as their jobs are concerned. I want to think that the only thing that journalists in this country beg to do is to do their job. I am talking about the genuine ones, of course, because we know that there are some who have decided to practice brown journalism. They will prefer to report on any kind of a thing or even give us biased information just for the sake of maybe earning a living. May Martinez Zogo's life rest in peace. May his family be comforted. And of course, may the lives of all other journalists who have died under similar situations, like the Wazizis, rest in peace. As we continue to hope that for once, the justice system in this country is going to do something in the right direction. Mr. Gene Elvis, uh, let's hear from Mr. Fivis, your ecology journalist and political analyst. Uh, we are expecting to see justice taking its course uh, following the death of Martinez Zogo, noting that uh, since 2019, uh, we've not yet seen justice being done since the murder of Wazizi. Um, it is a very uh, tricky and technical question. But I think that the answer is not far-fetched. When I say it's not far-fetched, it's because we'll be able to draw analysis based on the different uh, uh, scenarios that have taken place. We know about the Wazizi, which we know. There's another French who was, who was equally uh, killed under unclear circumstances in Yaoundé before even coming down to the case of um, Martinez Zogo. So if you look at it, there will be no justice. I know how the kangaroo system functions. It's, it's a confused system that is limping on one leg. Why do I say so? Don't be surprised that in the days ahead, they'll pick some few hoodlums around the corner and brandish and say, these are the persons who are suspected to have carried out the murder of Martinez Zogo. And so what? So the state is quiet because they are carefully working out a defense mechanism. These are things we should set them clear. Now, do we sit every day and say we are condemning by mouth? You condemn today, they kill tomorrow. You condemn tomorrow, they kill the day after tomorrow. You condemn the day after tomorrow, they kill the day after the other tomorrow. So at the end of it, where are we heading to? We should be looking at what are the strategies put in place to overcome the brutal murder, assassination, and torture of journalists in this country. And that's why I say that, that's why I get to know exactly those who work for the state and those who are equally objective as per se. Because from every indication, those who work for the state are equally fit far from it and are leaking oil that drips from the back part of their hands will be talking water in their mouth. Everybody say, oh, we condemn, oh, we condemn. I saw the Cameroon uh, French embassy in Paris carrying out uh, uh, special tributes to Martinez Zogo. Is that what we want? So you want to kill me, and then uh, we start having all night vigils, Cameroon embassy in Australia, Cameroon embassy in Liberia, Cameroon embassy. That is bullshit. It's bullshit. These ambassadors, if they were good enough, should have been able to act as advisors to their home government. Please, why this thing is taking? Is there any means we can track down those who are behind? 
That's what we expect. Because the state thinks that they are too intelligent, that those who step on their toes must be eliminated, and those who dance the buffet dance with them should be felicitated. How do you understand that if I come from Gunoko, for example, and I am murdered, my traditional ruler wants to perform traditional rights on my behalf, the president of the chief's conference say in Momo will come out to say that, no, we do not mandate the chief of Gunoko to carry on that. Does he, is, is, is he expected to, 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 to request audience and uh, permission from the president of the, of, of, the, of the chiefs in that area before carrying out that? You can see how people play mafia with people's lives. And look at the situation. That somebody dies, it is true. Minister of Communication went to Amplitude FM. But is that all? We are not getting any assurance. We have not had an official communique from the head of state, President Paul Bia, to say, we give you this few time, we will track down those who are behind. These guys take us for fools. We are not fools as per se. The ping pong game, your own day will be playing over there and then getting their boot lickers around them to be joining and blowing grammar. We condemn, we condemn, we condemn, and so what? That is where the issue lies, Mr. Lewis. So if we have a genuine regime with genuine followers who are patriotic as per se, they will not only be blaming grammar that will condemn, they will be using their connections that they have been using to perpetrate evil and to fit for the regime, to get back to the powers that be and say, but please, can we investigate this? How do you tell me that somebody is kidnapped in front of a gendarme brigade where he is knocking and begging for assistance for him to be rescued? And you will tell the gendarme brigade was closed. At what time was it closed? Gendarme offices are always open even in the night. They only close the doors around 10 p.m. When they want to sleep. But there is somebody on duty that you can even knock the door and shout, oh, say cool. And he opens and comes to your rescue. It was an organized crime. But the state needs to wash their hands, Pontius Pilate, by bringing us the real culprits. I say real culprits. We don't want to go and pick some, some rascals around the corner, can't put placards on their chest, and say these are the persons suspected. No, 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 no. The more they delay, the more we know the gimmicks are on. And the more they'll be fine to the strategies to cover up whatever has, done, has, done, has, been, has happened. So the state should help us because it is the duty of any government to protect their citizens. Look at what happens in the Turkish embassy over there. But we are told that the journalist, the investigation was on. And there are results as to how he disappeared in the embassy. So we cannot come to a situation in Cameroon. A Prado is mentioned. We cannot authenticate the information. But other information surrounding tells you that before the journalist was assassinated, there were already attempts on his life. And he had made mention of this to some quarters. How will Far Evis be on thread? And then he takes makes mention, he reports to A, B, C, D, and finally he's eliminated. And those people he had reported to them are not coming out to say yes. He had told us that this number called him. He has told us this person called him. These are the persons that should be rounded. Irrespective of their position in government, those persons should have been remanded in custody now. Whether you are a director general, whether you are a minister, whether you are a worker at the presidency, you are supposed to be rounded now, as I speak now. So that they begin to carry out the investigation. Not that people are moving freely, and then very soon they'll come and tell us that they've arrested some few persons, investigation is ongoing. Before you know it, the case dies a natural death. The case of Martinez Zogo will not die a natural death. Can we not hear that? If you think that you want to be limiting people like flies, it will not die a natural death. But I think that, Luis, in this country, it's a rule of law. I want to give you the benefit of doubt. The Justice Department and the second services should do their job if second service realizes that another second service agent was behind the buta boda the second service will arrest the other second service agent who is said to be in the limelight that's what we need here and so i don't know how it's taking long i am very worried that till now places are quiet the said rumors journalists are talking the Cameroonians are talking what is defense saying I expect the Delegate General for National Security to make an official statement. What is the Secretary of State for National Gendarmerie saying? What is the Director of SEMIL saying? What is the Director of a Special Branch saying? If they don't come out, it means that they are covering something. We expect them in less than no time to come out and give us traces, including the surveillance camera that was equally placed at the key air junction areas to track that and tell us that this is where we are arriving at. If not, then the game is on.
Dr. Ako John, lecturer and political analyst. We look at the death of uh, Martinez Zogu and the circumstances under which uh, he was uh, kidnapped and assassinated. I look at the press uh, in Cameroon and we still have fresh in our mind the death of Wazizi who died in custody. Will you sum all this up? What do you think is the future of Cameroon press freedom? Yeah, I... There is nothing we should be talking without. Eh? Somewhere they will tell you that press freedom is a continuous process and that um, we cannot get on one day and find everything on a platter of gold mm. and that where freedom has been expressed, we were witnesses of the 1990 declarations, the right to freedom, free organization, free press, free political parties. But I would tell you that somewhere I said, until there is a will of the people, to implement the undertaking they have had. The constitution of this nation has part of it we call the preamble of that constitution, which is an, a representation, I mean a representation of most international conventions that Cameroon has signed. The United Nations Declaration on Human Rights, the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, and many other rights. Which means that if we are a state, if we are being governed, the moment we have taken national and international engagement, the moment we have an obligation to protect, the moment we have a duty to get what is supposed to be done, be done in the right manner, we are supposed to see what we call a general movement. I will not see a gunshot in the United States. You will find the governor. You will find the mayor of the town. You will find the security, I mean, the security of that particular state. The head of the police department giving you details. The, the, the inquiry commissioner giving you details. In Cameroon, we allow everything that we keep on talking and talking and that nothing will come out. It equally gives us an idea. People are thinking that the Cameroon we are thinking and trying to conceive or project, it is one which cannot be achieved. That what is done in other countries can never be achieved in Cameroon. Why then do we get into such an engagement? One of the very first person, I have said several times that when power is overdue, it corrupts absolutely. That which means a few has taken Cameroon on themselves. And somewhere I said, we live in a system, a system of vampirism, a system where people think those who don't have the power cannot speak. How then do you explain that an individual within his confine of exercising his own profession is being tortured, arrested, humiliated, and even like molested to this level with Martinez ago. It is not what we are talking about what is he. Some people we are talking today because it concerns the press and we use the press. In more of it and in many other states we know that the press is at least if not second the third in terms of power control. But we have to accept that they have a role. What are we going to do after what is he? Like you see Mr. Barney just said that on the other time with what is he, those who were responsible are known. And up to now, nothing has been done. And now, in the case of Martinez Zogo, the claim we have, all of us, is that the identities of those who are concerned are not known. What becomes of situations when those who are even authorized, those have been incarnated by the laws of the nation, the constitution, to take care of their citizens, are the want again at the last, at the still end, tormenting the same citizen? What punishment might be reserved for such? Because we are talking, we want a liberal society where all Cameroonians feel belonging. Not where a few own the nation and that maybe after them, the nation cannot continue. A few have the willingness and the power to speak and give information. Today, we are still expecting a government communicate. At least it is modern days. We have not seen the commissioner of police of that department before the press to tell us to what extent what inquiry has given and what findings they might have seen. We find information, even the one coming from the hospital after the pre autopsy test, telling us it was a preliminary result and just information was given for few cameras or few journalists. This is supposed to be a public presentation of national and international press because this killing does not only violate Cameroonian national laws, it equally violates international laws, which means somewhere. If Cameroonian authorities cannot identify, then the international committee has a duty to ask the Cameroonian government to respond to such instances. Zogo will not be the lone person. It might not be the last. 
and we think that in future, if care is not taken, other Cameroonians are going to be victims. At a particular age, at a particular time, those who find in authorities with the wisdom they have incarnated for all this while, we are thinking that there is a need to have a more responsible government. A government that is capable of living to the aspiration of the people. The right to life is not mingled with any other right. Because in the absence of the right to life, then any other right uh, crumbles. We need to protect life than any other thing we have in Cameroon. But when we cannot protect, we cannot even give an account of what Cameroonians are, what are we saying? We, Cameroonians, will continue to deny that, and we think the proper system, even means the top parts of the state, this is what we are talking of, bad governance, but the issues of Cameroon are issues of bad governance. Is there no need for accountability? Are Cameroonians not willing and capable of getting information concerning one or other citizens, what is not going right? We need to know the details of what the Cameroonian authorities have done up to this level, and if possible, we need to see the procuration general to what extent is going with this inquiry. In fact, in criminal cases, the state remains the plaintiff, and we need to see to what extent the Procuration General has taken this case as his own, not the one that he's authorized, because we have seen in several instances they will tell you that he has done his inquiry, he's waiting for decisions. How can you be in the judiciary and you want such decision to continue with the case from executive organ. It, be, it, it gives an, an the idea that the nation we call Cameroon is simply being rolled on sand, not on solid rocks. We need a nation whose rules will last and be tested for time, not the one that become more perishable and shaky. If Martinez Hugo has a life, like what the life of others, Cameroonians and journalists in particular, for exercising their profession, there is need for the Cameroon government to protect every citizen. Every citizen, I mean, every citizen without distinction. It is not because he may be a low class person. We have the right to information. The right to information does not come from the state. We have the private press, which Zogo was even within his mandate. And with the communique he made within his program, Abutiash, he has promised Cameroonians that there are details of those documents he will present to them. And we're all. All of us who are equally media consultants, we needed such document so that tomorrow they should not tell us who song the proof, that there are no proofs. We need proofs when we talk. Otherwise, all of us now here are talking philosophy rather than talking knowledge because none of us have details of what happened and why he was assassinated. Everywhere we always need documentation. So the duty becomes that of the state uh, prosecution at the Procurator General in Yaoundé and his forces, meaning the judicial police, should even be updating us. When you go on advanced, I'm talking to where uh, uh, Foncha, Marshall, and maybe Dr. Santos are, they will tell you what the legal department is made of and will give you details on such cases minute by minute because the press should be there waiting. And this is the type of information that citizens need until the truth is released. The press, the media, I mean, the, 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 the legal department will not sleep. We equally need the same activeness within the Cameroonian government. Zogo, I mean, is just the first case that has gotten this to Wazizi. People never dropped flowers or made candles around his building, but you see, Zogo has a different edge. Others could not console with Wazizi because even the authors were known. From his arrest from Boya to when he got to Yaoundé, we knew those who carried him, where he was dumped, those people are still alive. We need facts. Let it not be like the other cases. We are talking of uh, Monsignor Bala, whom equally too, a lot of doubts were surrounding up to now. We cannot lay hands on what happened, where and how. Every time we have always seen that the inquiry, the investigations are still going on. And who are those responsible? We need to scratch and script out a system that is linked on destroying the very people they are called. To protect. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Akko John, lecturer and political analyst. We extend our very uh, heartfelt condolences to the uh, family of Martinez Zogo, hoping that uh, his killers will be identified and brought to book. We continue with Cameron. Uh, still, this time around, an uncertain atmosphere reigns in the conflict in the english-speaking regions of cameroon following the government's dismissal of the canadian peace talks the peace talks which uh, brings uh, 
on the dialogue table leaders of the various separatist groups operating in the conflict regions and the government of Cameroon were announced on January 20, 2023 by the Canadian Foreign uh, Minister. However, this uh, information or statement was dismissed by the Cameroon government, citing that it has not mandated any foreign entity to help it with settling uh, the crisis in the English-speaking regions of Cameroon that has been going on since 2000. And uh, 17. We hear from you, uh, Dr. Nicola Santo. The Cameroon government says it did not mandate any entity to help it in the mediation of uh, the crisis in Cameroon, but we understand that uh, we have been negotiations that started between Cameroon government and uh, the separatist movement, which was uh, being facilitated by Canada. Now, uh, what's your opinion regarding? Uh, this statement from Cameroon government owing to a peace talk uh, that was expected to be, uh, you know, facilitated by Canada. You have to put on your microphone, Dr. Nicolas Santo. Your microphone is not on, please. It's not getting. You put on your microphone, we can't hear you from here, Dr. Nicholas. Can you hear me now? Can yes, you hear me now? Hear you. Yeah, uh, go ahead, uh, Dr. Nicholas Santo. Yeah, uh, all of us, the whole nation, and uh, even us, the uh, ex separatists, for the former separatist leaders, uh, we have been clamoring for peace. Uh, myself and Foncha sitting there, we have, we are one of those who step out and began working for peace. And when we had that announcement ourselves, we were quite happy. Same like uh, the other, the entire nation was happy that at least something is being done in the right direction. But the first thing we have to call, to bring to the attention of each and everyone is that uh, there were a lot of things that has happened because uh, before a house is constructed, we should make sure that the foundation of that house is very solid. Mm. Uh, you remember that uh, there are four things that we have always been talking about that characterize the same people who claim to represent uh, uh, the Southern Cameroonians or the people of the Northwest and Southwest region in the diaspora. These people also have their own flaws, which have attributed to what has happened because. The government of Cameroon cannot initiate something, then out of a sudden back out with a strong worded communication of that nature. And these things are characteristics of the things that made most of us to have pulled out of this separatist movement, which are basically ego problems, ego problems, rhetoric problems, denial, and, uh, and, and, and delusion. Denial leads to delusion. Because let me tell you, if the government of Cameroon began contacting Canada mm. to discuss about peace, mm. that was a good sign. Myself and Funcha received it with a lot of happiness because this is what we have been looking for and this is what we have been working towards during the Peace Task Force Initiative and the Peace Patriots. We went out to receive the head of state in the United States when he came here and we presented ourselves as ex separatists giving some of our apologies for what we know that we influenced negatively, extending a hand to him to embrace the separatists who are still our comrades, our ex-comrades, who are still hanging with the notion of an illusionist, illusionary state or illusionary state called Amazonia. They should turn down their language of calling people black legs, calling people green legs, calling people yellow legs, or trying to uh, level people with red crosses on their faces and all those. If they tone down some of these things and come out of those ego problems, I believe and be apologetic for what they have done, for some of the things they have crimes they have committed. Because remember, we are those who won that the price of having a free country is very, very heavy. Because of what need will it be to take a country and don't have citizens in that country? And this is where we are in the city here with about six to eight thousand people dead. This is something that 
they would have received it with joy, yes. Kaho Daniel did it by going on air and saying that he is happy and that the, that peace is going to, uh, I mean, uh, peace has given way to some peace talks and stuff. He was happy and he was congratulating President Bia. The same President Bia who went to Washington, D.C. two months ago to receive and we were castigated and criticized and almost killed because of that. So let me tell you, hypocrisy is what characterizes all these things. Ego, denial and delusion. Even when the head of state extended that hand or if the Cameroon government contacted Canada and there was something in the pipeline like a peace, a peace talk, they would have kept it mute. But they came out in their various numerous talk shows, announced it, and using the same name of what the Cameroon government doesn't want to hear, which is that Ambazonia will be meeting Cameroon, not that the people of Southwest and Northwest region will be meeting Cameroon, or citizens of Cameroon will be meeting, meeting Cameroonian delegation. So sometimes it is good to change the kind of language that is being used to suit the situation if you really want peace. So I see a lot of flaws also on the part of all those who went to Canada because I saw some of their communications were saying the state of Ambazonia versus the state of Cameroon. If you, for example, if the government is initiating something in good faith, and out of a sudden it becomes something that is a state, treating the state against an emotionally state, and in the presence of a another country like Canada, that were the reasons that I think the Cameroon government say no, we cannot continue this. So the best way they did was just to say we didn't authorize Canada to come out uh, to be act as a mediator. So that's the way I look at it. But the fact is. The bottom line is, it's a good, it's a good step in the right direction because all of us have been clamoring for peace. All of us have been working towards peace, and we really badly need that peace. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Nicola Santos. Uh, now, Mr. Foncha, uh, what do you think is the reason why Cameroon government uh, rejected uh, participating in a peace talk uh, openly? Meanwhile, uh, according to information, they say both parties have been meeting in uh, Canada for pre-peace talks. Why did Cameroon government come out to reject and say it, it uh, did not mandate it, any entity to mediate any crisis in the two speaking regions of Cameroon? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Lewis, for that question. Uh, as of uh, today, uh, that is where the Cameroon government stands. The Cameroon, Cameroon government stands is they did not mandate any foreign entity to organize a mediation process for peace from my understanding of things cameron government is a faction of the cameron government probably the prime minister's office initiated this uh, pre-talks for peace and reconciliation with the separatist movement but the fact of the matter is cameron government never gave authority to Canada to mediate between Cameroon and the illusionary state of Ambazonia as the separatist leaders and their cohorts have got have been out for several weeks pushing in the social media space and other print media. So we are talking about mediation for what? Are we talking about peace and reconciliation? amongst Cameroonians, especially in the Northwest region and the Southwest region. We are not talking about a negotiation for peace with an illusionary state Ambazonia. So, in as much as myself and Dr. Nicolas Santos, we have been working on peace and reconciliation ever since we abandoned the Secessions Movement. The Secessions Movement, which our former compatriots, those leaders, are making the same mistake over and over and over again for trying to self-appoint themselves as leaders to represent the peoples of the former Southern Cameroons, which is comprised of the Northwest region and the Southwest region. We have to separate the two things here. Peace and reconciliation is what the Cameroon government has been calling for, and we ourselves as ex-separatist leaders, myself and Dr. Nicolas Santos, we have been on this train 
ever since we left and we have been castigated called all types of names and even put death threats on us because we were calling for peace and reconciliation now the Cameroon government actually has been calling for this openly even the head of state in his uh, new year um, 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 address talked about peace and reconciliation but not with an illusionary ambassador state so if the secessionist leaders who were in canada want to continue with this process they have to come to the table understanding that they are bringing their various secessionist factions for peace and reconciliation in cameroon not negotiating peace between an illusionary state with the state of cameroon as recognized as a sovereign state so i am still appealing for the government to find a way to re to rephrase that statement that was put out by mr rene Sally, the minister of communication to find a way to talk with these same leaders again even initiate a new process and make it very clear that the Cameroon government is interested in peace and reconciliation amongst Cameroonians from the northwest and southwest region, especially, and the entire population of the country from all the 10 respective regions. That is how we should be going in. That peace negotiation was not a national conference or a constitutional conference. Now we're going to be going in there to determine the form of state and governance in Cameroon. That is how the secessionist leaders who went to Canada, they were perceiving it, and that is how they publicly stated their position as if they were going to Canada, and Canada was mediating a peace process that is going to facilitate and bring to light their illusionary state of Amazonia. So the Cameroon government have the right to reject that statement or that wedding or that process that Canada put out because the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Canada jumped shit to go out and put this statement out. I want to ask one question, Mr. Lewis. What is the official Canadian representative body in Cameroon saying? The, Can the Canadian ambassador to Cameroon. The Canadian ambassador to Cameroon or the Canadian embassy in Cameroon has not given an official press release from the from from, from uh, um, uh, to the Cameroonian people, you sitting there as a journalist in the country have not been given the audience to ask these questions to the Canadian ambassador for him to show that the Cameroon government actually asked the Canadian government for uh, to, to, to mediate a peace process with an illusionary state of Amazonia. No, the Cameroon government asked for peace and reconciliation. Full stop. So I am calling on my various um, 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 former friends, because some of them, now I say former friends because they will kill me. If they have the opportunity, they will chop my head up and put on the stake, like my, 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 my esteemed friend um, Ayaba said. So I'm calling on them for them to understand that those of us who, are, who abandon the socialist movement, we believe in a new Cameroon. But in order for that new Cameroon to be rebirth, we must first reconcile among ourselves for peace. Any other topic outside of peace and reconciliation has to be fully represented by the Cameroon peoples from the entire 10 regions of the country. We are talking about something completely different now. That is a constitutional conference. That in Canada, Cameroon government never asked them to go and help have a constitutional conference in Canada. Ask them for peace and reconciliation. So, Mr. Ayaba, Mr. Akwanga, Mr. John Barakoro, and, and the rest of them, Sese Kotabe Julius, I am calling on all of you all, my fellow brothers and sisters, this is the time for us all to embrace peace and reconciliation. If we want to talk about all the aspects of the state and form of state, leave your illusionary Amazonian state and come to the table when the people of Cameroon decide to hold a constitutional conference that will be equally represented by people from all the 10 respective regions. So, Canada, Jumpship, the Surface Leader, Fobo, and Cameroon withdraw from that talk. Talk for peace and reconciliation. That's all I got to say.
we have to make peace as a constellation, then we move forward to the next step in Cameroon. That's all I got to say. I think it was a missed opportunity by the separatist leaders, and also it was a missed opportunity by Cameroonians for all peace right. and reconciliation. I all think right, thank we you. have to restart this process. Thank you, Mr. Foncha. Thank you very much. And in reaction to what you said, uh, following. Uh, the in reaction to the declaration as well of uh, Cameroon government saying they do not mandate any entity to uh, mediate in the peace process. Now, this is what the Canadian uh, government said. Uh, it said uh, uh, the Canadian government insisted that the talks between the two main actors of the conflict remain unperturbed. It further urged for some months uh, that representatives of the Cameroon government and several Anglophone separatist groups have been meeting in Canada for pre-mediation talks and they affirm their participation in the further peace talks to end the conflict. That's of course what uh, the Canadian government reacted following uh, the statement from Cameroon government that it did not mandate any entity to assist in resolving the Anglophone crisis. Now, uh, let me hear from you Mr. Gene Elvis Banner. You just listened to Mr. Foncha. Now, uh, do you think uh, the reason why Cameroon government is backing out of this peace talk is because uh, of uh, the uh, position presented by the separatists, uh, of course, following what Mr. Foncher said. Mr. Gene Elvis Bane, can you hear me? Uh, Mr. Gene Elvis? Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's, you get, yeah. Let's hear from you. I'm getting you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I was about saying that to me, let us really be factual when we say certain things. I don't think that the Canadian government or Canada could have made that blunder of going out to issue the statement that they is without ever having any pretext with Cameroon per se. For the Cameroonian government to claim that they never mandated anybody to mediate or facilitate or do any such thing. Secondly, you realize that after the Canadian statement, um, uh, the separatist leaders or the ambassador leaders, they issued a statement in which they themselves also made, uh, uh, made clear that they had agreed to go in for some sort of or sort of mediation or whatever thing. So I don't want to think that the statement by the government in Cameroon could be that serious to want to claim that Canada did not or receive the mandate from them to have to do so. Well, we all know that preachers have been going on since the month of, of uh, October. Secondly, I don't want to think that countries like uh, the US, like the Vatican and others, came out of that endorsement without verifying to actually be sure that Canada or that Cameroon had been at the pre talks on the team. Now, I'm to, to talking about the fact that Cameroon might have backed off because of what um, uh, uh, Foncha and Dr. Nick say here. I don't want to think that um, uh, that can, uh, can hold. Because when I hear, for instance, um, uh, Foncha saying that the government might have backed off because perhaps a faction of the government led by the Prime Minister initiated such uh, people without the government of Cameroon. We should be careful when we say that the Prime Minister is the head of government in this country. And I don't want to think that he could go as far as initiating such talks without blessings from the head of the concern. To say therefore it was a faction of the government going in and over without the others doing, I don't want to think that could be the reason why they back off. Secondly, to want to insist on the fact that the Canadian official in Cameroon, the ambassador, has not made any statement. When the Canadian government issued a clear statement and have even come after the Cameroonian communique to insist that pre talks had been ongoing, I don't think it is only what the Canadian ambassador will say in Cameroon that will therefore come to convince people because I don't think the ambassador too will also come out to say something different from what his own government has repeatedly insisted on. Thirdly, to want to think that the government in Cameroon backed out because Ambassador called people black legs, they are hypocrites and all not. I want to rather think that it is a greater hip hypocrisy coming in from the state of Cameroon. On the contrary, like Fonja himself has already said, I think it is a missed opportunity for Cameroon to sit at the table for us to talk. Because they, the government, when I say they are in the regime, they have been insisting of not knowing with whom to talk, at least for once. We saw the, 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 the separatist leaders who accepted this time to talk, 
But now it is the government that backs up. If there are certain things that they did not like or do not like, like the uh, Nick Santos said about the attitude of the separatist leaders, I want to think that in a process of mediation, people are called upon the mediator can have the means to call some people to give in certain, uh, at certain areas and take what the other person offers and vice versa. It is not for you as an individual, therefore, after pre talk consultation to take upon yourself to say you are backing up because others are hypocrites and all that. I want to think that in this crisis, both camps have been hypocritical in their way of doing things. But if today there is a possibility for people to sit and talk, at least I want to think we should have at least given that process a chance, go onto the mediation table, go onto the negotiation table, and only back out from there maybe when we discover that others are coming into some sort of impose their will. But like I say, I think that Canada is a country that we can take serious in the presence of UN officials and other nations. We could give it a chance and then see what obtains from there. One other thing I will tell you, Mr. Bidben, is that I want to say that if Cameroon back out, it is because in reality within this regime, there are some people who don't even want the war to come to an end. And remember that when the head of state in his um, end of year speech made mention of the fact that Cameroon was open for... Uh, 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 for peace talk and overnight, it might even be because he knew very well that his government was into some pre talks that was eventually going to um, uh, lead into maybe a process. You see, you know, knowing the way Mr. Biad does his politics, he did not necessarily need to come out and start announcing to you. Just Mr. Gina Elvis Bane, we hope to re establish connections with you uh, just uh, shortly. Uh, now, Mr. Faevis, uh, former U.S. Secretary of State Tibor Nagy, in one of his tweets, said he was not surprised with Cameron's denial of the Canada Peace Initiative, uh, noting that it's a proof of division within the ruling class. What we understand is that President Paul Bia is the one who uh, who's the power to decide on what should happen? Just like Mr. Gina Elvis equally said, uh, President Bia during his interview speech, and equally Dr. Uh, Ako equally mentioned that Mr. Bia says he was, he was ready to dialogue to end the crisis in the two English speaking regions. Now, this division within the ruling class, who are those who certainly don't want this conflict to come to an end, or who don't want this dialogue to, to push through? Um. Those who don't want the dialogue to push through are those who are fitting fat from the conflict. Mm. We don't need to meet a soothsayer to understand this. But I think that while coming in, I listened carefully to Dr. Santos and the Foncha. But I think that people should understand that we are no longer fools. We could be in Cameroon, but we are as intelligent ten times than those who are equally abroad. Because knowledge now, you can seek knowledge depending on how you study and look for it. Mm. Now, you see why sometimes uh, we might be tempted to say that there are some persons who will not want the conflict to end. This is a freak media. A repeatable TV. To hear those kind of response from America, from the Tonic Santos and Foncha, it is ridiculous. I say ridiculous in broad daylight. If Dr. Santos and Foncha were living in Cameroon with us, and in the relative areas, those their grandma will not be the way they are talking there. They should hear very well. I am absurd. I'm so disturbed, rather, to hear that academicians of that high portfolio will tell us that it is the behavior of the uh, of the separatists called the same black leg and all the like. One thing Dr. Santos said, which is correct, is that ego yeah. might have been starting with him. Starting with him. He said ego. But I am disturbed because he is on educating Cameroonians. The ego is on both sides. Mm -hmm. When I say Bosa, what does it mean? Cameroon government calls this AOB terrorists. The local language tells you that if a man is on the side of terrorists, he can willingly come and sit down and talk with you. It's a piece of my imagination. So why they call a black leg? You, the government, also calls them terrorists. And as you give all kinds of names, it is not a good scenario for a dialogue atmosphere. The presidential objective that is on both sides of the coin. But when we are on a particular side, we lean on one side, for reasons best known to us, 
It defeats the purpose of peace. It means some of us don't even want this peace to, to come back. Now, look at the whole scenario. I don't want us to use this platform by advertising ourselves. We are ex separatist fighters. We did this. We came to America. Uh, we welcomed President Pobia. That's not what I'm saying here. It's bullshit. We have hot fries on our table. That is far more than advertising ex separatist fighters who were received by President Pobia. That is not a grammar here now. Because I was saying, two security officers were killed under the Mbamenda. It's a call for concern. As we're saying, another ambush sometimes took place in Manfe at the Aran Saturn Bridge. Security officers were killed. I hear ammunition were taken out. It's a call for concern. Then a steel bullet shoots A or B. Or a local officials were shot in Bamenda. It's a call for concern. That is what matters on this platform. Not whether A is ex separatist fighter and grammar up and down. No! I think that, Mr. Lewis, the issues are that we are deviating. Let the parallels in America understand that this is not America, this is Cameroon. And for, for someone to think that the Cameroon government just backed up because of reason A, reason B, I expect honest persons to say that Cameroon's government back, that is coming out of it, is a blunder. It's a blunder on the part of the Cameroon government. When the topic reads, Cameroon denies asking for help with Anglophone crisis. What does it mean? It means that they do, they, they are first of all refuse that they do not have anything to do with Canada. But Canada could not be stupid to have made this kind of declarations and still say that they hold their stand. Maybe Dr. Santos and Foncha should get back to their findings. Because I know the one which that took place, and I know those who attended the meetings. Those are state secrets. I don't want to go into you get the point. Mm -hmm. Because they are still unfolding. But they should be able to do finding because they had their colleagues who attended. They know state officials who attended these things. They should not come on air and behave as if Canada has gotten one morning and has a particular interest and they are blowing government in the air. Look at the statement from Foncha. Foncha tells us that we are journalists. The Canadian ambassador in Canada has not made any statement. It means he has no knowledge on, on diplomacy. He has no knowledge on diplomacy and hierarchical presentation. The foreign minister or ministry is the head of all diplomatic services. Which means the minister, the foreign minister controls all ambassadors around the world. And before a foreign minister makes a statement, it is the stand of that country in question. Foncha, here yeah, very well. Though. Take your pen and books and, and, and begin to write. And so you will not expect that when the foreign ministry of Canada comes out of declaration, the ambassador here should come out immediately. He could come, yes, but he, there are procedures. They move under mandate. Because when a boss talks, you cannot come and you start you like you are challenging. Unless the boss tells you, please, go back and reiterate the fact we have mentioned because the current ministry cannot give a stand that represents the stand of the Canadian government, which will be different from that of the ambassador who is working under the tutelage of the country that sent him. These, these things are, are easy even for one child should understand. So if you come on a platform like this and begin to blow government because maybe we have some benefits left to write, look at the confusion we are confusing ourselves on broad daylight. That even those who have done diplomacy, those who have done international relations, could look at us and say, But is this man really normal? Because this is the thing we have to understand. Now, before I cut, cut across now to wrap up, Mr. Lewis, the issue is this these persons were supposed to they, see Dr. Santos and Fulton should be honest. These are gentlemen. Tell the government you have blown that. When Swiss talk was coming up, factions of the separatist fighters were refusing A and B. It was a whole hell. But to have seen them come out and they're appreciating that the government has now decided to. These gentlemen in America should say, these guys did well. If you hate Amber, I don't have any problem. I am not their leader. But if they take a move, I personally, I said on several platforms that if the Ambazonian leaders are now agreeing for peace talk, it means that peace has finally come. But at the end of the whole show, I think that when we work in honesty, because millions of viewers are watching us who are more intelligent than us talking to this government here. And when water is in our mouth, they know that there's water here and there's water there. So in a nutshell, if the state comes out to dance a bafia dance, it is a sham because the foreign ministry, Canada ministry, still insists on their stand. And you know with the white, they don't talk much. They only tell you, I insist on my stand. And before you know it, they can start bringing evidence that show that A was in the meeting, B was in the meeting, C was in the meeting. How do you come to explain that? And so, if we have a mediator that comes in, and similarly Swiss talk stream, and Christian talk is coming out, and the government that attended these meetings, as I'm surprised that Fulcher tells us that it's a faction of Prime Minister. Just imagine how we want to 
plunder the government again in confusion. Those watching us in Yaoundé could step to start thinking that Prime is acting differently from head of state. No. These are outrageous statements that can even plunge Yaoundé regime into conflict by men. Kita envoyer même. Kita envoyer. No. There is a on the ground. Prime Minister can never engage aspects of peace talk crossing across borders without the regime being aware. This is diplomacy. If not, it could be termed as treason because there are key issues you cannot take out of the state, territorial boundaries, without informing the powers that be that you are engaged in this and without getting a, a green accord to involve. So, those in the diaspora must understand it. If they don't know, we can teach them diplomacy here and now. So they get to understand that there are statements you give. You have to water the statement. You have to look at it because the statement can implicate you and the statements, if not well catered for, can even cause confusion in the camp of the government who will think that maybe you have an idea of what the Prime Minister is doing behind the, or, or, or at the back of the head of state, which is not so because the Prime Minister is answerable to head of state, President Paul Bia. We should not come here with blame government as if it's a faction that go up and down. Do we have facts on the faction? No. Prime Minister has no complaint that he engaged this and this and that. The state, through the Minister of Communication, has said that we do not mandate. They have their reasons. But for us to come up here and begin to defend a reason and giving other wrong reasons, it is appalling and it's a sacrilege to the welfare of this country called Cameroon. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Fire Evis. Uh, we got your point clearly. If the peace talks were not uh, in accordance or accepted by the government of Cameroon, uh, Dr. Akujon, why then did the Prime Minister come out, or rather, why then the Minister of Communication come out with the communicate denying that the Cameroon government did not mandate any external entity to mediate the the crisis why is that confusion or where is it the confusion coming from uh, very interesting very interesting the fact is that the government too had never informed Cameroonians that they were in negotiation with anybody mm -hmm. secondly we need to understand sometime in 2021 you realize that there were negotiations between separatist leaders at the Kondengi prison with some government officials at the um, um, Volier, uh, I don't know, Episcopal uh, Center, a lot of those negotiations were made with Ayok Tabe and others. Mm -hmm. The same government came out to say mm -hmm. they are not in negotiation with anybody. And somewhere they come publicly to tell you that they are for peace. Mm -hmm. When you have people of a double sort nature, and somewhere I'm telling you double sort in the light that the Prime Minister of Cameroon, everybody now is aware, that since he came into office, this gentleman has been doing enough and a lot, putting in a lot of energy if this crisis can come to an end. But somewhere at the corridors of power, when you get somebody like Nick Santos telling you of part of government, it is absurd. The prime minister is head of government for Christ's sake. And if prime minister is head of government, every other member of government submit to the power of the president to the, of the prime minister but now cons considering what a first set uh, we are living within a kangaroo system where nothing follow formalities if the press the prime minister speak the only person to contradict contradict the authority of the prime minister is the president of the republic but when you find another minister fighting you it tells cameroonians that the very reason under which this country is for crisis is justifiable that an anglophone cannot talk and this government moves on that path. Because if the Prime Minister was Prime Minister, we know the energy has been put in. We have seen the Prime Minister talking in Bamenda, something else, and a minister telling you something else in Yaoundé. And that option of the minister stands. Who then are we fooling? Are we really using the government as a, a theater, I mean a stage, where they come and act their movie and then we just have to talk? It is again sad that people will be telling you, even those who are not even within the corridors of power, to dare, I mean, guesswork, that it is because separatists said, when the major national dialogue was organized, how many separatist leaders was there? Were there? Didn't the government go ahead with the major national dialogue? Otherwise, a monologue. When they made their meetings, and some of them came and drank, spent money in huge, I mean, expensive hotels, Government gave checks to some to displace from Europe to Cameroon. And at the end of the day, I mean, what we have been saying is that
push on, there is never a day. Cameroonians, even the government in Cameroon is aware that you find everybody, even those in government, telling you that we are okay with it, we can talk now, and we cannot talk now. If jealously we have what they call the anthem, motherland, fatherland, the promise we have made to Cameroon is to settle with the sons and daughters of Cameroon in the way we can do it until our own time will expire. I tell people, Cameroon will remain, but Cameroonians will pass away. The only history that we have to make is who will think what will the people talk of us when we are no longer on the stage. You are not here. We don't know what people are going through. Peace and reconciliation takes a lot of dynamics. It is not propagated. It is not a, an, an, an office's choir, a chorister's pronunciation. It takes a political will to do so. These are Cameroonians. Some are dying even at the moment we are talking. It sons and daughters, parents, fathers of others. This is why we are saying there is a need for lasting peace. Lasting peace, not perishable solutions. When you come and make such declaration, at the time time we are waiting, yes, it is completely out of place for somebody to tell you that after a foreign minister made a declaration, the ambassador need to talk. I want to tell you that in international politics, the foreign minister of a nation has spoken. We needed to get from the other side of the Cameroon government, and the Cameroon government must respond through his own spokesperson. Le Jean Bella Bella and many others that town the corridor of international uh, politics know and are aware that the Cameroon government was negotiating. I, yeah, am aware that the Cameroon government was negotiating. In a speech made, and the Pope second his opinion, the United States second and opined to that. I mean, the United Kingdom equally opined yeah. that the Canadian initiative is laudable and worth appreciating. And you find a government where people are ruling on horses and knights, pilots and others on armed chairs that they think they will never come down. And then coming out to tell you that we are not talking. In whose position are you talking? For the people of Cameroon or for yourself? It equally suits well with what Dr. Santo said. That egoistic self tender tendencies is what is bringing down Cameroon. Many people think that they talk for themselves and they take the other. But I will tell them that we are aware. Not up to 1% of these people rule Cameroon or control Cameroon. We are 99% against the 1% decision. That they should know. We need to feel free. We need to move in this country. We need to take a movement from north to south, east to west without fear. But today, some people are, I mean, scrapped up in one part and another part ungovernable. Others' businesses flourishing, others unable to eat. Others sleep on wanted places in and around Africa. Others comfortable in their glass houses and others use the same event to lobby for personal recognition and identity. What Santos and the other did in Washington was a mere publicity of the identity. If you talk for the name of the people, there is need to tell the government you fought that. There was need to talk. Yes, uh, Frontier Obi, reconciliation will not take us any cost. We have a duty, no matter what it takes, to bring people to talk. Everybody might not be okay, but we need to move on. Peace and negotiation is a continuous process. Even those countries that have gained independence, after the independence, they had internal squabbles. That is why the Pope will be in South Sudan. It has not ended, and we will not stop talking. The Pope could go down low to lick shoes of all expired Africans with dirty heads for what they thought came, but they were still unable to maintain it. We will not give up for peace until peace returns, no matter what it takes. Time, I mean, the train will keep on ruling, others will join. Others may falter. Others will come later. Some may be at the end of the journey. But peace is what season. That is the opportunity. And whether you eat from it or not, the people, those who are suffering related to one person or the other, some of you know very well that we can live where we live and we are living well. But what of our brothers and sisters were unable to visit? I just made an illusion here. I've lost a chief in my village. I'm unable to get there because the circumstances don't permit me. We are deeply hurt. We need to support what is right no matter what it takes. It is not the fact that the majority speak a lie. That makes it the truth. And even if one person speaks a lie, that remains a lie. Even if 100 accept a lie, it remains a lie. And one person speaking the truth remains the truth. We know the force of the government. That decision, go and read. 
99% of the forces to negotiate rest with the Cameroon government. 99%. Whosoever, Amber, ADF, Kamasesh, whatsoever, whosoever in this battle is the least. If government convey people tomorrow for Switzerland or Canada, people will be present. You will be present. Others, will be, others might not still come. But we need on lobbying because we need them. We need everybody for sustainable peace. We have had Cameroon that one of his motors internationally abroad being sold was that is the most stable nation in the whole of Central Africa. Can we be proud now where we are that Cameroon is a stable and more peaceful nation? We cannot. We cannot. There is a need that when people have grown up, it is not because maybe others have controlled that power for the years they have been there. There is a need for sustainability. A new brain, everything, the new machines. When you have a minister again being in government for 20, 22 years, it is what is taking us into this. You come back to egoistic tendencies because you are not capable of relinquishing power. We need a new Cameroon where people can think otherwise. Can we move to the Pope? Why not? Others have used the office of the Pope. Look at the elections in Congo. The Catholic Church, I mean the Catholic Church in Congo, played a predominant role. And they all accepted for that outcome. And this is where Congo is. Though with the fighting in the north or whatsoever frontier with Rwanda, it will not change that Congo is equally for peace. And the church is playing its role, giving timely and daily reporting. That is why the Pope will be visiting that country. That is why the Pope will be visiting South Sudan. It's a continual peace initiative. It has not ended. Even when we conclude later, we need to make up. Nigeria, Cameroon had an agreement. The agreement is still being shattered and being jerky. That is why there's a continuous follow up what they call ad hoc commissions. And why not? Cameroon case cannot be handled on a twinkle of an eye. It may take centuries. I told some years back, when the crisis started, what has just started in Cameroon may take us another century or half a century to handle. We are not willing, and every day we see delaying techniques from both camps to continue bringing down the witches and the intentions of the better people of Cameroon with the man mandate we have given the government. The government has the right. I have said that several times. It is not by Facebook. Since a state exists by Facebook declaration, how can a Facebook message twat and twist government position in directing diplomacy, which is not even with those organizations you call? Is vis-a-vis -vis other nations? The decision taken by government affect other government and states that were in support of such a movement. We are Cameroonians and we know how it is intended. Cameroon need peace, no matter what it takes. The first error the government made, where the first negotiation failed, was the dissolution of the consortium. That was a talking point between Cameroon and Cameroon. No matter what it was going to take us, the consortium was supposed to remain an institution. But the same egoistic tendencies, power uh, mongers, people want to prove to the others, Bala and Justice uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Neba, that they are more powerful than them. Let's cancel it. Let's arrest them tomorrow and they will see what to do. When they don't have what to eat, they will go back to the courts. Yes, we are going back to the courts today. Has peace returned? That is what the morphology others may not get. Cameroonians, some who are ignorant, will keep on accepting with the government twisting and coming back. I insist that there is a need for peace. And the Prime Minister's office remains the lone office for that. Except the head of state is telling us now that there are other ministers that talk better than the Prime Minister. We should stop twisting the young man. The politics in Cameroon is not like other nations. Otherwise, the Prime Minister at this level has a right to submit his resignation and tell the government, I'm not ready to be twisted as that. And he won't lose anything. He remains a public civil servant. It was a political appointment and will take his posture in his domain where he belongs. Let all Cameroonians work for their family and their stomach and nothing less for the general interests of Cameroon. Things are more sustainable in a nation when we think of the interests of all rather than individual interests. The Prime Minister, the Chief Dr. John Gute, is a man with a good heart and right. has all intention. Any other minister comes behind him and we must listen from him. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh Thank you very much, Dr. Ako, John Lecturer and Political Analyst. Uh, peace and negotiation is a continuous process, and that's exactly what uh, Chief Dr. John Gute, uh, Prime Minister of Cameroon, noted uh, in 2019 after the major national dialogue. He noted that uh, the Cameroon government has been in continuous uh, talks with uh, separatists in a bid to end the crisis in its two English speaking regions. And uh, 
that's of course uh, what many have been hoping for peace negotiations should uh, continue to end the crisis and we've seen an initiative here uh, being piloted by canada the canadian initiative to end the crisis in cameroon we're looking at uh, expecting that this was supposed to actually uh, bring the two parties to a dialogue and a negotiation and a way out of the crisis the Prime Minister's office is yet to react, but the Minister of Communication came out to denounce or deny that Cameroon has not mandated any uh, external authority to help in the peace process. Now, uh, Dr. Nicolas Santo, who do you think at this level regarding what has been happening so far is uh, not willing to, or who is benefiting from the chaos in the two English-speaking regions, and who is benefiting from uh, the crisis that is ongoing regarding the fact that uh, Chief Dr. Dongoti said dialogue has been ongoing, talks have been ongoing between the government and separatists, but an initiative as such, uh, led by Canada, was seen uh, a communique saying the Cameron government is not in accordance so i've not mandated anybody now who is benefiting uh, from the chaos which of course is ongoing in the northwest and southwest region dr nicolas santo are you with us can you hear me can you hear me we can hear you dr nicolas santo hello uh before I Answer, answer the question. I need to respond to Mr. Pa Evans because he, he, he mentioned my name a couple of times. Uh, the first thing I will tell Mr. Pa Evans is that you, it, it is just his style of talking, the same manner he talks. It may be, it is a reflection of one of the reasons why a minister should write this kind of a letter. Because let me tell you, when you come out to defend the position of an illusionary state by taking that position of Amazonia. It's not the position for which the Cameroon government is concerned about anything. Not for the recognition of this, that state. But these discussions were some sort of defending their position because they are not here and undermining what myself, Poncha, have been doing a long time ago. Because if you talk of the Grand National Dialogue, for example, which is the foundation for which all these peaceful discussions have been going on. After a long period between 2017-16 to 2020 or so, there had been a deadlock. And some of us are the ones who break that impasse by discussing with the delegation for the Grand National Dialogue that came to the United States. And at that time, we were still in the separatist movement before we educated others and took them out of it. So what is happening now is most people who are still there are still using that rhetoric which the Cameroon government has vowed that they will not recognize anybody that uses that rhetoric of calling themselves a state that has not gained statehood. This is where we are. So let's not be lying to ourselves. We know that because, uh, uh, these errors are being committed by those who claim to be leaders in the diaspora because they want their struggle to continue so that they keep on with their activities of kidnapping for ransom. They keep on with the activities of uh, uh, identification and projection of themselves as leaders of a country that doesn't exist on the internet. So when we talk about all these things you guys have said here, uh, pointing fingers to me, myself and Poncha, are uh, the things that we have been criticizing that make us to walk out of it because, first of all, they don't listen to anybody. They have an agenda of generating money that they are buying arms, which is money meant for paying their house rent, clothing themselves. Most of them are unemployed. And you see this kind of things that you say, myself and Poncha, to continue to support this kind of people instead of supporting the pathway to peace. Are you kidding me? Then again, you come to talk about us having ego. If we were having ego, we would have joined the cabal of making this innocent money in the diaspora from them, from kidnapping. Madame Regina Monti paid 50 million. Who are those who received this money? Why is the American government rounding some of them up? Because of money that pass in their bank accounts. They are making this money and they want it to continue. That's why they will continue to claim that there is a state that doesn't exist. So that whatever good feeling that the Cameroon government had of discussing, and it, extending a hand to them, must be thwarted. Then Mr. Far, there is one thing you said about this. Like you are trying to lecture some of us about international relations. Remember how the bachelors in political science 
a master's in psychology and a doctorate in clinical psychology. And I was awarded a, a humanitarian lifetime achievement award by President Joe Biden in the United States of America. So don't, you don't come to dampen my judgment as if academically I'm unsound. I'm a psychologist. I diagnose a situation. I look into the pros and the cons and I jump out of the water when it is hot and find for safer grounds where I can take my people out and limit the amount of killings on the ground. I've been working, helping, advising as a psychologist, advising the state of Cameroon, advising the separatists on the best direction to go, which is peace. How can you criticize us for going to talk this issue with the, with the, with the President of the Republic and his delegation about peace? How can you criticize us for coming online and apologizing for any bad comments we have ever made? Because when you apologize and make a U-turn, it's a point is to show that it's a sign of maturity. It's not a sign of weakness. And we expect those hard, uh, those those, those uh, hard-minded separatists who are still using, who are still committing these errors. Because of the errors may be intentional, intentional in that they want the fact that the dialogue should not continue by continuously to continuously using that statement of Ambazonia, Ambazonia, Ambazonia in the presence of Cameroonian authorities, which is what they have said. They don't want this. Don't use this. So this is one of the things happening. And we also know that there are some members of government who are profiting from this. They are profiting from this. This is not something new. But the fact is, let Mr. Far Evans and whatever come know that myself and Foncha, we are working for the good of the people. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Nicholas and so we got you clearly. We just want to remind us if you're watching that you can get to us directly via WhatsApp. Cause only via WhatsApp you can uh, call us and send us your reactions. We we'll have them uh, here uh, during the program. Thanks very much, uh, uh, Mr. Foncha. You just listened to Dr. Uh, Nicholas Santo. To you, is it the separatists who are uh, not willing to? Dialogue to end the crisis in the two English speaking regions. Taken from what Dr. Nicola uh, has just cited, we saw Cameroon government organizing a 2019 major national dialogue, which uh, uh, ended with uh, special status. We've seen other peace initiatives uh, like the Swiss talks, we've seen the Coalition for Dialogue and Negotiation, the Consortium, and the Ghana Peace Talk, and a lot of others which have failed. Do you think uh, it's been uh, those initiatives are failing because? Are the separatists are not willing or who do you think is responsible for uh, not wanting the crisis to come to an end through po a possible uh, peace and negotiation? So I also want to take uh, to respond to Mr. Fai, uh, the statements that he has made out here on uh, TV. I don't know if you can hear me. There's a lot of uh, uh, static on the background. Can you hear me? Okay, it's better now. Yes, I want to take this opportunity also to uh, respond to Mr. Fai. I want to uh, uh, say that Mr. Fai, from his statements, it sounds like he's, um, he's appeasing the separatist movement. One. Secondly, Mr. Fai is very disingenuous in his characteristics of the statements that I've made here. The reason why I use the word a faction of the government because we all know that within the Cameroon government, as Professor Ako has rightly said, the Cameroon government, the, the Prime Minister goes out, who is the head of government, make a statement, and the minister goes back and make another statement. And in most cases, that minister from the French extract of the country, his statement holds. So already right there, Mr. Ako has been Professor Ako is in agreement with what I said that there is a faction in the Cameroon government. We know the Prime Minister Head of Government, Chief Dr. John Guti, has been working very hard for peace to return in Cameroon. And myself and Dr. Nick Santos have been engaged in that process with the Prime Minister's office. And for reasons that I don't want to mention here, there are certain individuals in the Cameroon government who were also part of those free talks in Canada that we are in contact with them that have thwarted initiatives for peace that has been brought up before by the Prime Minister and some of those initiatives, we were part of it, myself and Dr. Nicholas Santos. So we know that certain individuals in the Cameroon government are profiteering from this conflict in the Northwest and Southwest regions. 
And those individuals, they are the ones standing in the way of peace. The head of state of Cameroon, President Tobia, is an elderly statesman at this point. So we have vibrant, young, educated, and very intelligent people within the government that are using their intellectual capacity for nefarious purposes. Why we have almost like the Prime Minister, Chief Dr. Don Gute, who is trying to do the best thing for the country. That is the reason why I use that word faction within the government. If you understand what I'm saying, Mr. Luis. That faction exists within the government. A faction that wants peace and Cameroon to move forward for the better of all the citizens and another faction that don't want peace that are only interested in profiting from the war and also looking to assume power, political power in the country beyond 2025. This is what is happening in the country. So Mr. Five picks on certain things that are said here and Dr. Nicholas Santos and try to highlight it, but he's tilting what we have said and sounding almost like an appeaser for the session spoken. Now, that is the fault of the government not to pursue this stuff. As I said, it's a missed opportunity. But also, the blame equally goes to the separatist leaders. Because the mindset of going into this peace and reconciliation talk as if you are representing the entire population of people in the Northwest and Southwest regions and you are going there to speak for their behalf. It's wrong. Going back to the point where Mr. Ackerman and even Mr. Farr, they are sitting in Cameroon. We are sitting in the diaspora. I have made this statement several times over print media and TV segments like this. We in the diaspora, we should only be coming up with ideas and proposals that can bring peace in that country. But when we want to talk about genuine peace and reconciliation, it should be individuals like Mr. Fire and Professor Arco and those of them in Cameroon to be on the table as well to talk about peace. How can you talk about peace in Cameroon with separatist leaders in the diaspora without the presence of stakeholders and the grassroots of the country being part of that peace and reconciliation. So, Canada talks should focus on peace and reconciliation, which means secession, secession of arms hostilities in the Northwest and Southwest region that some of the separatist leaders are sponsoring. Now, if the separatist leaders agree to that, then I want to urge the Cameroon government and those individuals within the Cameroon government that are blocking peace initiatives that have been put on the table by the Prime Minister to fall behind the Prime Minister who is head of government so we can solve this problem once and for all. So I have not made any statement that is supportive of the government. I have instead objectively criticized the government as I said in my statement. We Cameroonians must Real patriots must objectively criticize their government because if they don't, they are also part of the tyranny that they live under, of which they live under. So we are here not to support the Cameroon government for their excesses, and we are also here not to support the secessionist leaders for their excesses because I can tell you frankly, some factions of the secessionist movement have completely morphed into financial criminal syndicates. This is a fact. And these financial criminal syndicates, they are sponsoring acts that can be categorized as terrorism in the Northwest and Southwest because, yes, some of those fighting factions on the ground are actually terrorizing the same people they are claiming to, 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 to protect. So Cameroonians are dying from both ends from the hands of the separatists and from the hands of the uh, regular government forces because okay. there are so many instances that certain factions, certain um, 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 squadrons of the government, regular government forces have committed atrocities as well. So we are not here to support the Cameroon government. We are objectively criticizing their actions as well. So Mr. Fad should withdraw that statement that we are here trying to push ourselves on, on a higher level. We are not interested in political positions in Cameroon. We are fighting for the, the better for the next generation of Cameroonians. We are not interested. But because it's our ancestral homeland, we take it upon ourselves to know that, yes, we come to the point and say, yes, 
Cameroon had an existential problem, political problem, economic problem, that led some of us to join the arms insurrection. And this arms insurrection, I can clearly say, Mr. Fai and Professor Ako have made this statement. Maybe you guys have not heard me before. It's due to the pressure of the arms insurrection in Cameroon. I'm not condoning it, but I will say that the arms insurrection in, that began in 2017 brought pressure to bear for the first time in Cameroon history that the government organized a grand national dialogue which I can categorically say is the international and public acceptance by the government of Cameroon for the first time that there is a problem in the country. Because we remember uh, the Minister of Territorial Administration before he became Minister, um, uh, Mr. Atanganji, went on the media and said that there is no anglophone problem. We remember that statement. But fast forward, the pressure that was brought to bear due to the arms insurrection forced the government to organize this grand national dialogue and all the separatist leaders were including myself was in were invited to the grand national dialogue but because of security we couldn't go and because the international community was not there to give us the protection that we need okay mr Fair. i remember in 20 one, one point one point i gotta make here in 2020 i think it was 2020 myself and Doc, dr nicolas santos we had a two-hour meeting with the Cameroonian ambassador at the embassy in Washington, D.C. The plan was for us to fly to Cameroon and go and talk to people about peace and reconciliation. And because some of us are American citizens, the then Secretary of State for African Affairs, Mr. Thibault Nagy, under the Trump administration, we were about to get clearance from the State Department of the United States to, for the United States to put, give us the security that we need to go to Cameroon. So, now, we are still urging the Cameroon government to get back on this peace and reconciliation talks with the secessionist leaders. We are not rejecting. But it should be genuine on both sides. Not one side. We cannot blame the Cameroon government and don't blame the secessionists. Both sides are at fault and we have to accept that and we know Peace and reconciliation, as Professor Ako rightly said, is an ongoing process. Then we have to guarantee the safety and protection of those who are going to be involved in that. Hey, we don't have to talk in Canada. We can talk in Boya. We can talk in Yaoundé. If the international community, if the better Canada provide the necessary international security and guarantees, we will all converge in our country, like how the Afghanistan people, they organize the loyal jogger and Afghanis from all over the world went to Kabul. Or Iran, when people like Adrian Chalabi, the left United States, all of them, they went back to Baghdad to have a peace and reconciliation summit in the Green Zone. So we want international guarantees. So I'm not knocking the Canadian talks. I'm not saying that there was no free talks. All I am saying is the secessionists made a mistake and the government also had factions within it that don't want peace. That's what I got to say, Mr. Lewis. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Foncha. Those of you who have been trying to get to us uh, through the number on your screen, you can call us again directly and we will take your calls and uh, equally listen to your different reactions. We will gladly welcome them. Uh, Mr. Gene Elvis, uh, who benefits from the chaos in the northwest and southwest regions? We'll look at the several uh, field uh, peace initiatives beginning from the major national dialogue to the other peace initiatives that have failed. Who do you think benefits from uh, the continuous chaos and who is against uh, peace initiatives which uh, of course have been failing in regards to bringing an end to the crisis in the two English speaking regions? Well, I think I'm a uh... I would say on both sides, we have people who do not want this crisis to come to an end because um, they do have what they benefit from it. It has become a money-making affair for many. That's what I would say. And uh, my concern as of now is really not those who are benefiting from it, but that with respect to what um, we've all been saying here as Cameroonians, I think our concern and focus remains the fact that there should be a process and that the state of Cameroon, like the separatist leaders, should be able to give it a chance. 
Thank God that the Cameroon Cabinet, the Canadian process is here. We can only but continue to call on the state of Cameroon to get back onto the table so that these talks can um, uh, begin. You know, when I hear um, uh, other stalls, I mean particularly um, uh, uh, Santos and um, uh, Foncha, the question I keep asking myself is, if we have a prime minister who is the head of government, who are the other people in the faction that will talk and the state decides to follow what the other ministers have said than that individual who is their head has stipulated? Because I can still say again, if Cameroon was part of the pre-talk, and of course we know they were, at least the prime minister championed it, if we put it that way, his ministry, uh, he, yes, his office championed that, and the head of state must have been informed. So I don't see any reason why they can back off because there are some other ministers perhaps who did not or do not want it, maybe because um, they are eating far from the whole system or not. Secondly, when I still hear them talk, and we talk about um, uh, Cameroon backing off because um, uh, the, the services are still insisting, insisting, insisting on the fact that they are ambassador leaders. That is not my concern. I was not part of it. But the question is, before Cameroon engaged in the pre-talks, with whom were they talking in the pre-talks? Were not the same people? That's why I keep saying that the most important thing here is that we should give this process a chance, mm. let the mediators and the facilitators use their prowess and see how they can cause both camp, both parties to be able to give in at certain points and uh, let go at certain points and or, or whatnot. It is a give and take process. And like we say, it must begin for us to get some prepared. But if you pretend to want to be for peace, yet you will not accept any peace process, then I say there's a problem. At this particular point in time, I hear people talk about um, hypocrisy and all or not. I want to think at this point in time, as it stands, the Cameroon government perhaps has played the hypocrisy to the international community. And uh, the other way around, I think, Mr. Biden, that the real problem here is that with the arrogance and the pride of we cannot talk to terrorists, we cannot talk to ter terrorists, that might even be the reason why the state of Cameroon could not outrightly come out to accept that they are into a process because it may cause people to ask questions. But I want to think, from, the, from my own understanding, know how this government functions. Uh, unfortunately, we lost connections again with you, Mr. Gini uh, We have indications that, that they'll see yeah. call online. Yeah, uh, just one minute, let's have a call online and get back to you, Mr. Gini uh, We have someone online. Hello, good afternoon. You are live on Africa Media. Let's hear you. Hello, we have a call online. Good afternoon. You're live on the Pan African debate. I'm, I'm trying to uh, talk to Africa uh, Media. Are you getting me? <laughs> yes, I'm just, I don't want to contribute uh, uh, my own little condition in this thing. Uh, Mr. Fairvis and uh, uh, the rest of my brother back home, I'm trying to say, you guys in the studio, I say hi to you all. Uh, yes, they're talking about uh, no, uh, Dr. Nick Santos and uh, my brother Foncha here. I'm trying to uh, tell them that this issue of uh, this dialogue issue, they should be able to say the truth. By sitting behind, criticizing other people, they are terrorists at this, you people are interested aggravating the situation and it will not change whether the government like it or not they have to sit with these people and dialogue this thing to be to end you people are seeing all what is going on the ground our people are dying i saw Munyenge yesterday on a video i, I wept i wept we don't know what is going on the ground don't mind all of the the, the, the anglophones had that bonded yourself into faku and they feel that that is where the peace is what about our grandmother in all those in Umocho, in, in, in Lokolo, all those villages? People are no more there. And when we come in the media, instead of calm down people, we sit and we are our code, we are doctors. We are this. That those doctors, we should remove our doctors and put aside and see how we can sort our differences when we solve this problem. We will keep on just aggravating the situation. These people that matters are the people that are carrying them. Guns. Let me be honest to you guys. You can sit there with your code and be making noise. The people that matter are the people that are carrying guns, they are instigating on the ground, and the fight is going on. But instead of you guys to come, I will see how to make this thing work. People are dancing with the government. There is two factions of the government of Cameroon government. Every person knows that we should be able to be telling the truth. That's why Dr. Nick and my brother Foncha, when you guys sit there, it doesn't me. Uh, you, you guys know me, and I know you people, but the problem is we should not be aggravating this situation, please. 
we should set things the way they are. I pity when I was, I was telling you, I saw from Menge yesterday, I cried. We don't know. People are wondering yourself in Sako and you people are there clapping. All right. So uh, that's my only two contributions. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks for your opinion. We heard you. And we have another call online. Uh, good afternoon. You're live on Afric Media. Let's get your opinion. Okay, uh, unfortunately, we could not get you. Uh, Mr. Gene Elvis, uh, maybe uh, you wrap up with your, what you were saying in just one minute before we, we move on. Okay, Mr. Gilbert, thank you very much. I was saying, and I will just conclude by that, that um, uh, it doesn't matter those who are benefiting, be it on the ambassador side, be it on the part of the state of Cameroon. What I would rather say here is this. There is no one individual or group of individuals who are above the state of Cameroon, for instance. So if there are a handful of persons who don't want the war to come to an end, at least the prime minister who is head of government and who is fighting hard for peace to return, if he is championing something, a cause, which we believe the head of state is informed about, I think it is enough for the government of Cameroon to engage into that process. Secondly, for once, we saw a greater majority of the Ambazonian League groups accept to come together and meet in Canada and even those like um, the Irish of Chris and who were not there at the beginning ended up giving their yes, their green light, saying they were going to join I think, and I'll say again that the Canadian process to me is a chance that we should not let go, it is not yet too late and uh, like uh, I would just want to conclude by saying, we should know one thing Mr. Bilben, when we sit on major like this to talk, like Mr. Far Elvis said it is not because we are the most intelligent it is just that you have given us the opportunity to contribute our own ideas an honorable man is judged by virtue of what he says and what he does. And we are all judged here by the audience that watches us. So I am happy that on this platform we have two honorable people. And so we should all mind the things we say if truly we believe that what we say is going to work in line with what we are all traveling for, which is a return to peace in those um, in, in the former uh, British Southern Cameroon. I think I can handle the map at this level. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gene Elvis. Uh, equally, an indication that we have a call online. We just take five minutes to receive your uh, reactions before we come back to conclude with our panelists here in the studio. Uh, hello, you're live on the program. Good afternoon to you. Well, uh, let's uh, try to hook up with uh, other callers. Uh, Hello, good afternoon. You're live on Afric Media. Let's get your opinion. You're live on Afric Media. Let's get your opinion. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Let's get your opinion, your please. Good afternoon. Yeah, I want to thank um, uh, Fire Elvis and uh, Dr. Wish on the panel to tell them that congratulations that she continue to educate the Cameroonian because we are on the feed and they also are on the feed and see what happens. We should forget about the big grammar, those people who are in America that are eating there, talking what they don't know, talking diplomatic, telling who Cameroonians, I am this, I am that. We are not out for that for now. What we need now is how to go to the table and discuss peace. People are dying on the ground. I was yesterday at a corner. What happened there if they are there in America talking what they are talking? If their mother or their brother or their family were there, they wouldn't have been saying what they are saying now. They should tell the Cameroon government that our people are dying. We should go to Canada for a peace talk. A peace talk does not mean that we are going to separate the country. A peace talk has a process. If we bring our own suggestion and the government of Cameroon bring its own suggestion, we are going to debate on it and come up with a solution. Not to sit on um, in America and be blowing big grammar, selling, provoking people on the ground. I have lost my parents. I have lost house. This in my village. I cannot go to my place. Business are not moving here in Cameroon. And they are talking nonsense. I'm sorry to tell them that. They are talking nonsense because they are not on the field. If they give them envelopes to come and talk nonsense, they should know that we have refugees all over. 
This is another aid that America has sent for our refugees. Are they not seeing that it is a disgrace to Cameroon? Thank you, sir. Tell them that they should encourage Cameroon government to go to the table. We, we got your reaction. Thanks for participating on the program. Uh, certainly, let's uh, get to the last caller before we conclude here. Uh, good afternoon. You're live on Africa Media. Can we get your reaction? All right. Still uh, unfortunate. Uh, let's have this caller. Hello, you're live on Africa Media. Let's hear you. You're live on Africa Media. Good okay. afternoon. Let's get your reaction, please. Hello, um, my name is uh, Julius Chefa. I want to ask a question to. Uh, can you hear me? Are you getting me? Yeah, reduce the volume of your TV set. We get you. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm away from myself now. Can I can I ask my question? Go ahead. Right. I want to ask um, uh, Dr. Nixanto. Uh, uh, it said that uh, to get um, uh, uh, Sorry, your line is not, uh, your network is not the very best. We could not continue with your, your call. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the program. You're live on Africa Media. Can we hear you? You're live on Africa Media again. Let's get your reaction, please. Yes. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me on the program. I'm calling, yeah, I'm calling from my uh, brother. Talking about the, the, the talks which uh, is presumed to be taking place. I just want to say that Cameroon is just playing a, a kind of game that people do not understand. Because I don't think the Canadian government will come out and boldly tell people that, uh, that they are engaging in talks with uh, the, the, the parties involved in the conflict. And uh, some few days later, the La, La, La Republic will come over to, to deny the fact, you know, they're just playing for time because they know that should the southern Cameroonians, should the Ambazonians sit with them on the table to start negotiating, they know that certain conditions should be put forth which they will not be willing to accept. That's the only fear because they know once they sit on the table to start talking, it is gone. Southern Cameroon is gone. Ambazonia is gone. So they're just playing over time and trying to seek advice from France, which is not even helping them to see that they delay the process and the process does not see the light of day. After they did the major national dialogue, what has happened? Nothing has happened. Uh, donor organizations, international organizations, uh, uh, gave money to the, the Cameroon government, the Republic government, to, to, to rebuild Southern Cameroon. Up to this date, what project has been carried out in, the, the, in, in, in Ambazonia? No project has been carried out. You know, so the people are just there, you know, just talking without any strings attached to, to make people see the reason why we should believe in them. Uh, I belong to I belong to a group and I've just seen some horrible pictures where some uh, Southern Cameroonians have been taken out of a uh, reportedly taken out of a bar in, 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 in the north uh, in the northern zone of Ambazonia and shot shot dead. They are presumed to be Ambazonian fighters. What determines that the Ambazonian fighters for the military to go pull them out and shoot them and kill them. So we live in a, in, in, in a, in a situation where it is dying and we need the parties to go to the table, sit and talk so that we come to the end of this matter. If they keep denying it, I bet you we are on the road to leaving the Republic. Thank you. Okay. 
very much. Uh, we appreciate your opinion. And uh, our uh, reason for being here on this topic is to find ways to resolve the crisis in the two English speaking regions. And uh, we need advocating for division, no war, but advocating towards a possible dialogue to end the crisis. Mr. Five is how do we get to that dialogue finally? Uh, we'll look at 2019 till now, the several failed peace initiatives. And uh, this is certainly, should we call it the final bus stop? Should we uh, mount pressure on who and how should we achieve that peace that will put the, an end to the crisis? Definitely we have to mount the pressure. Whether Yaoundé likes it or not, they will dialogue with the separatists or whatever name we have. Whether they like it or not, we must come down from our children's horses. Now I see the American panelists who are talking there. My worry has been that when you say you don't want to dialogue with illusionary state, but that's the illusionary state that is keeping us down, ghost towns. That is the illusionary state that holds an economy, a physical economy with man by Jews, uh, as Jews ministers hostage. What are they talking about? The end they live the grammar of illusionary state. If an illusionary state is playing an impact, it's just like you go to a church and they talk about miracles. And a man prays and you're falling. You don't see the power, but you feel it, right? It means that there's a power. So if a prophet blows just by air and people are falling, it means there's a force to reckon with. You don't need to see the face before you say that, no, it's an illusionary Holy Spirit. I want to see the Holy Spirit physically. No, these are errors we do day in, day out, and prolong this war for no good reason. I've seen the gruesome images out there in Bamenda of the two young guys uh, who have been shot dead uh, in cold blood. Is that the kind of jungle system we like? That if a man is said to be this, uh, maybe a non-state amateur fighter and he cannot be tried, when in a competent court. Now, look at how we are trying to put the situation front, in front. But those who don't ally with, with our ideas will say, no, the way Fire is talking, I see him uh, giving on the staff the separatists. That is the rhetoric I got from the response from the American people there, now, on this platform. And so you see that, that policy of victimizing, once an idea comes and looks to be opposite from theirs, whether it is manned by any reason or not, the next thing is that far is surely a separatist the way he's talking. And that's why many persons have gone in. I tell you now, many people have been locked up only because some people just curse something and say, this is my separatist, and before you know it. So what is the way forward? Let Cameroonians listen well with the American people who are watching us now. Those on the platform there. We will not be talking grammar any longer. The way forward is simple. When you are calling for pre-talks or negotiations or whatever, it should not be tied to particular clauses. A man should come if he say Ambazonian, say yes, come, you are Ambazonian, no problem. I'm not refusing. Come and let us talk about your Ambazonian state and let us hear. Don't say if he's calling Ambazonian, he, he will not accept. But if he calls anything, thing, let's go nowhere southwest, that's where you will accept. That is where I say that we have that aspect of ego that is killing us till now. And so we must move to the table pretox. Next point, next point to put in place if we want to solve this issue is that we must be able to be honest to ourselves and look for what we call a venue of neutrality as one of the steps for conflict resolution. I don't know how people study conflict resolution. I don't know. Eric is there. Other inter uh, international relations schools are there. and other. I don't know how people study. It means they have refused. Because this thing is not coming from me. There, is, there are steps to follow when conflict resolution is concerned. We talk about venue of neutrality. Once people identify, the story and the excuse of always saying that, no, it is because... Uh, the ambassadors are not united. That's why we cannot do that. It's a lie. South Sudan, they were in faction. DRC, they have been in faction. Sudan means Sudan, Sudan. They have been in faction. But yet, they were able to grab those who could come and start with them. And then others queue up and move. That's what we do with conflict. If you are waiting that ambassadors themselves will ever be united till today, it's a lie. If you are waiting that the government as a whole will form a united front to come, you might not have it. But they must start from somewhere. And once this is done, I repeat, I got a parody talk about, you know, the government had a national dialogue. No, that was a monologue. Anybody who refers to that monologue and family bringing together civilian militants is not serious. Because the terms of the conflict were not respected. So once a video of eternity is met, an immediate accepted by two parties, I said, the fact that I had, I got some of the Northern Amateurs or, or the leaders confirming the Canadian issue means that we could start from there. So we must have all of this put together in a genuine manner, if it is not genuine, as per se, with water in our mouth, we will be blown hot air while people are dying day in, day out. Those are things okay. I think, but why wrapping yeah. up the issue of Martinez Zogo, the state, remember a commissioner was killed in Bamenda, mm -hmm. and it was given uh, so to us, 
to track down the culprit. And within 72 hours, those who killed that commissioner were tracked down. Family members of that commissioner, they're, they're watching me now. When the guy was killed at the, at the travel agency, a gendarmerie officer, it took no less than no time, and the petitioners were caught. Remember, each time a security officer is killed anywhere in Cameroon, within the towns, when the crime means a business, they track you down. Right. Why is the case of Martinez so very difficult? Right. We have an intelligent service, intelligent private service, intelligent government service. They can use them. I tell you that if the government wants to know those who killed Martinez Zongo now, All right. they'll bring them to book now and start doing them now. Unless they're hiding something, they should wash their hands like Protest Pilot and do the right thing at the right time when people are expecting results. If not, that's another form of conflict we're building. All right. And we don't know how long it can take us for us to get into a civil war, which God forbid. So at the end of it, genuine dialogue. Dialogue with others and say, bring all your points on the table. If you choose Ghana, you choose Canada. Let us go there. The 12 billion that was side phone for family meeting called National Dialogue. Mm. We need that kind of nine, 15 billion to put in this Canada issue. Okay. Put and pay, put whatever they have to come there, give them good hotels to sleep. We will start getting peace. If not, the government is responsible for not wanting this crisis to come to an end alongside with those who are fitting fat from the system. All the services fighters who too are not wanting it to come to an end mm. must also be held accountable. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Five. So we're ending with you, Dr. Ako John. What is the way out and what is uh, the way forward? Pressure for a dialogue to hold, but yet all the initiatives are being dampened. And who do we blame? Not blaming actually, but who do we mount the pressure on so much so that Cameroonians, especially those in the English-speaking regions who are feeling the pinch of uh, this crisis. You had mentioned uh, Prime Minister Joseph John Gute, who is equally from uh, the regions which is in crisis. He too uh, has his own story to tell about how the crisis has impacted him. Uh, he's been making efforts in resolving the crisis now. What else do you think can be done and who can do what so that this uh, dialogue can hold and peace can actually return? Yeah, um, within, first of all, the word pressure gives an impression that um, the person should be conducted on a dialogue table by force. Yeah, because there's a need for peace to return. If there is need for peace, we need to do things by will. The voluntary action of people, the intention to talk, and the love for the nation, the love for one another, that we wish to be as one another. When there is an intention for force, then such peace might come and might still be unsustainable. Uh, we don't want peace where Cameroonians will still fight after another 60 years. Because the Anglophone crisis has been, uh, has been as old as the independent years of this nation. It started right 1961 with the twisting of whether this nation should be 1st uh, January or 1st October. To whom none of these people now celebrate this day. And that is why you see some people are telling you that let's get back to the 1961 status. And the 1961 statutes tell you that there were two Cameroons, and that two Cameroons had um, two independent days, which is normal. And you find, like in the United States, when we talk of State of the Union, the State of the Union address given by the U.S. President every 20th of January is a recognition that what we call the United States of America is not a territory made up of one single individual, and that is the will of all the factions that came together to form the United States of America. And that when you look at it and we accept to tell the truth to one another, that the wars won the Federal Republic of Cameroon, and once again, the wars won the United Republic of Cameroon, and once again, a single decision brought about the Republic of Cameroon. Are these facts not glaring? Do we need to look for witchcraft, that it is the same cause under which we are fighting, and that the same constitution is troubling, that presidential position and other official position can also be rotatory, because one part Felt, felt weakened and that it can never become in power because they do not make the majority of this particular nation. And that's so. For more than 60 years now, it is only the Francophones that can have the leadership of the government in Cameroon. And that the Anglophones are called to litter on the second ground. Why not even at the fourth ground? Because the prime ministerial power now can be contested and other head boys chosen to make a public communique without the accordance of the prime minister. Is that not just an idea that the prime minister simply means first minister when called up, he should answer first to his president and nothing more. If we know within the state there is a need to accept that institution were created by the constitution and we need to respect them. They said on the president shall appoint the prime minister on the nomination or uh, suggestion of the prime minister, other members of government will be uh, nominated. 
Today, the Prime Minister is uh, vote, uh, nominated the same day, and in the same day, we have the other ministers. That's why we see twisting. And in governments where the Prime Minister, head of government, if something is not going well, he resigns, and every other minister resigns with him. Today in Cameroon, it's not the case, and we know very well that only one person overrules here. We have the king, the supreme leader of the nation, where everybody gives accounts and still has a more better relationship with him than the person the constitution said he is. That is why government is weakened. We need a Cameroon where all of us can talk to one another. We need Cameroon of our times when we came in love and peace, not by guns and bullets. A Cameroon where we can talk for 3,100 years without a shot or loss of a single life. And that we think that such a nation is a nation that we cry for all. For Cameroonians to come to be one, there is need for the authorities of Cameroon to accept that we are all one and indivisible Cameroon in dignity and in right. And that everybody has a right to aspire. Everybody has a right to criticize. And that no matter what they do, they do so in the name of the people of Cameroon. That the Constitution has mention of it. Everything we do in the name of the Republic of Cameroon, President Paul Bia remains the overriding host, and we think he can bring, bring this mess to an end. Cameroonians from the public sector, the government officials, those in the government are quarreling. Cameroonians of non-government agencies, separatists, federalists, unionists, are divided in the same light. Many others want to sell their image and make plight, and even eat from the same money we're used, supposed to use to construct the same nation. Others have received lobbyist character for missions abroad when they cannot conclude how much that mission brought back. What help has the nation gained from all this? We need to concentrate those resources in Cameroon. We can talk this issue. We can make it happen. We need the will. I just need the government. I mean, we need the will. Okay. That the government of Cameroon should accept that there was a happy Cameroon and that they faltered. The two cubes of sugar have refused to melt and that those who were hungry as lawyers have gone to court, but the crisis has not ended. And that the insult of dogs and animals still reign in people's brain. Can we sincerely tell Cameroonians in an official communique that we have had it all wrong and that we can talk to Cameroonians now? We need one and individual Cameroon. A Cameroon with federalism will be uncontested and uncompared to that of other nations. We know very well the successes of federations and we know what we can do. We have the energy, we have the resources. Cameroon is one. Cameroon is for all. President Paul Bia, there is a need equally on your side. Maybe absolute power has corrupted absolutely. 2025 is not far. There is a need for a new blood. Why not? Make it at the level of your party. We will equally vote that new leadership that can bring you hope. And why not resolve the Anglophone problem for time, which we will all appreciate. Thank you very much, Dr. Ako John. The Anglophone crisis, possibly trade dialogue, it's a possible concern bringing the crisis, of course, to an end. Cameroon denies asking for help with Anglophone crisis and following the uh, Canada's position in mediating a peace talk to end the crisis in Cameroon. That's our topic, and that was our topic for today. And equally, the murder of journalist uh, Martinez Zogo, a deadly blow to press freedom. In Cameron. We appreciate uh, those of you who are watching us uh, back at home. Thank you very much for coming and thanks very much for your argument. Dr. Ako John, you are a lecturer and uh, political analyst. We appreciate you for being part of the program. We equally have uh, had Mr. Fivis, journalist and political analyst, Mr. Fivis. We appreciate you equally for your time and thanks for coming. Yeah. On Zoom from Yaoundé, Cameroon's political headquarters, we had Mr. Gene Elvis uh, Bane, journalist and political analyst. Mr. Uh, Gene Elvis, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. We had equally on Zoom. Uh, Honorable Dr. Ngu Santo, you are a humanitarian and peace advocate and equally the 2022 U.S. President Lifetime Award winner. Thanks very much for being there. And equally so, Foncha, chairman of New Africa Coalition. You were equally on Zoom, uh, Nicole, all those of you who were watching us back at home and those of you who were watching us uh, live on Facebook. Those of you who called Nicole, we appreciate you, our technicians uh, who made it possible for the program to be live on air this uh, afternoon. We equally very much appreciate those of you who were watching. A uh, rebroadcast will be yours on Monday at exactly 14 hours GMT. On today, more programs are yours on Africa Media. Stay with us. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>